Edmonton is so full of oil. Alberta is so full of oil. They're slippery eels. That's just how I feel. But anyway, the Edmonton Oilers started up like in 1972 as a World Hockey Association team. In fact, it was an Edmontonian by the name of Wild Bill Hunter who brought the World Hockey Association to the forefront with a few other people. He wanted a representation of a rival towards the NHL, noting that basketball had the ABA and the NFL had the AFL. They were like, we need something to match it. Baseball, not so much in the 1960s and 70s. They didn't really have much competition. But anyway, the Oilers were dropped in. They were made to be the Alberta Oilers, and then they moved to Edmonton to become the Edmonton Oilers. They were decent. They won a couple of AFCO Cups, including the – well, they played in the final WHA game of all time in the AFCO Cup 79 final against the Jets. Unfortunately for Edmonton fans, their team lost. However, Dave Semenko scored the last WHA goal in history, so that's something. Regardless, the others were one of four teams who jumped into the NHL as the NHL decided to put some teams into their league. Edmonton started out quite well in 1980. They had a very strong team. Mark Messier, Mark Hunter, um, Parker McDonald, Blair McDonald, sorry, um, Ron Lowe, Dave Dryden even was there, but no could compare that to the great Wayne Gretzky. That's right. Wayne Gretzky was an Edmonton Oiler. Obviously, a lot of fans know that, but he was an Edmonton Oiler before the NHL. That's right. Wayne Gretzky dipped his toe into the World Hockey Association as a member of the Indianapolis Racers, and then was traded to Edmonton in the trade that sent Ed Neal and Peter Driscoll the other way. The Racers would fall eight, days later, eight games later, and the Oilers would be huge and all that. So the oil drops got Wayne Gretzky and signed him to a 21-year personal contract, which was amazing. But Gretzky almost could have went into the draft, but the others needed to priority select him, and they did. Gretzky was on fire. He won the Art Ross Trophy and the Hart Trophy, but oddly not the Calder Trophy, for one main reason. Because Gretzky, being in the WHA, was not a quote-unquote rookie. Ray Bork ended up getting the Calder. Oh, well, at least the culture was given to someone worthy. The Oilers in 1981 were a much better team, especially Gretzky, as he kept things roaring. Edmonton even took the New York Islanders, the defending Stanley Cup champions, to a six-game series before losing. But you know what? That's a hot five. I mean, the Islanders probably were frightened a little bit. However, Gretzky turned the world on its head in 1982. When he scored 50 goals in 39 games, he actually scored five goals in the 39th game against the Philadelphia Flyers. And Don Cherry, who was guest commentating, said he has 50 before anyone else has 30. It's amazing. Gretzky's proudness and his 92 goals that 1981-82 season brought. He even scored his record-breaking 77th goal on former Kitchener Ranger goalie Don Edwards of the Buffalo Sabres in Buffalo, February 1982. Gretzky's Exploits brought the Edmonton Oilers to the forefront. Heck, they were runaway winners in the division. They would have to face the very lowly LA Kings that didn't really have much, except for the Triple Crown line of Sir Taylor and Dion. Edmonton was shocked when they lost Game 1 of the series at home to the Kings, but rallied to win Game 2. But Game 3 was a different story. They had a 5 0 lead. They had a couple of big missteps. King scored 5 2. And then one of the biggest blows of all time Gary Unger for a five minute high sticking penalty that cost them dearly as the King scored two more power play goals to tie the game at five. The others had a few chances. Mark Messier accidentally hit the post and went over the net with a few shots. And then Daryl Evans scored on a young Grant Fuhrer. I'm surprised Grant Fuhrer played in that year in 82. But yeah, anywhere number one. And a weird mask. <laughs> but the others did pick up the pieces and won Game 4 in L.A. And all they needed to do was win Game 5 of the best of five at home if the Kings. Not so fast. They lost. Now a lot of people are thinking, why isn't this the what if? Believe me, the team I picked 
deserves it more than the 82 Oilers. Of course, that made a mess in the Western Conference as Vancouver snuck through the divisional playoffs and got to the Stanley Cup Finals, when the Oilers easily beat them in the fourth rate. In 83, the Oilers were much better. They didn't take anything for granted and went to the Stanley Cup Finals, but lost to the New York Islanders in four straight. However, Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier both admitted that as young, brash players, well, their team was called young, brash players, they were, they needed to take it more seriously. After realizing the Islanders weren't really celebrating their Stanley Cup win, they were wheezing and moving. They said that they had play of proudness, and basically they needed to act more mature, and it worked. Oilers went through the 84 playoffs, taking on the New York Islanders in the Stanley Cup Finals, and beat them in five. So the Oilers dropped the Islanders' five-peat opportunity. The Oilers would repeat in 85 as Wayne Gretzky and Paul Coffey went, went on a playoff scoring blitz. That would, that would be major, of course, realizing that the Oilers and Blackhawks really scored goals against each other in the 1985 Conference Finals. Look up that series. It's huge. So anyway, after 86... The Oilers got their third Stanley Cup in team history in 86-87, but it wasn't easy. The Flyers took them to Game 7. Oilers were up three games to one and nearly choked it, but thankfully a couple of key goals in a 3-1 Oiler win saw them win the Cup on home ice. 1988, Wayne Gretzky was up to yet another Cup, his fourth Cup. Amazing, though. The Oilers swept the Bruins. However, history will record that it took five games for a sweep. How? Well, as I said in my Boston thing, the Oilers and Bruins in 1988 had a 3-3 tie throughout late of the second period, and then a transformer blew out close to the Boston Garden. Unfortunately, Boston Garden lights could not be revived in time, and they had to postpone the game. All the records, like the goals and all that, were, were counted, even though that it wasn't an official game. Dang, boy. Dang. So anyway, the Oilers in 88 had the painful reality that money talks. And unfortunately, because of Pocklington's failed business ventures and being the owner of the Oilers, he had to sell off Wayne Gretzky for money. $15 million, in fact. Gretzky went to Los Angeles. But the players in fall. But the Oilers did send Mark McSor Marty McSorley to L.A. too, at Gretzky's insistence. Gretzky had the chance to veto the deal, but he couldn't turn back now. A lot of people were pissed off about Gretzky going to L.A. because his wife was a Hollywood actress, and they thought she was the one behind it. Unfortunately, Edmonton fans did not take the Gretzky trade well. In fact, there was even a chance that the Canadian Parliament was going to try to put a bill to deny the trade, Canada's best export. But no, it failed miserably. Pocketton wouldn't let it down. However, the Oilers did, in fact, do decently in 1989. However, they had to deal with Gretzky and the new look LA Kings, who basically changed their jerseys to resemble something cooler. Gretzky and company were down three games to one. The Oilers were thinking, we can win without Gretzky. They couldn't finish him off. LA won in seven games. That series, a tight series. However, the Oilers would put up another playoff fight in 1990, their second year without Gretzky. In fact, it almost all went for shit. The Oilers were down three games to one in the first round to the Winnipeg Jets. And all Winnipeg had to do was win one game, even game six at home or something. But sadly, though, Bill Ranford proved his worth in the net. And the Oilers dropped the Jets, dropped the Kings. No, sorry. Yeah, dropped the Kings. And then dropped the, I would say, Blackhawks on their way to the Stanley Cup Finals when they took down Boston in five games. Surprisingly, a little bit easy, considering how good Boston would have been. And there was no Grant Fear in the net or Wayne Gretzky on the offense. The others would go on to have a few decent years, but then they slid off the cliff, to say the least. 97 was a magical season in Edmonton. The first round was magical. They took on the number two seed Dallas Stars in the playoffs. They won game five at game five in overtime, I believe. And and then they lost game six at home. So they had to go to game seven in Dallas. And if it wasn't for Cujo's miraculous save off of Joe Nudek shot in the first overtime period. 
the others probably would have lost. A few minutes later, it was Todd Marchant who sunk Detroit Hearts. Unfortunately for the others, the Avalanche dropped them in the second round. 98 was also an amazing playoff run, as they were the 8th seed against the number one Colorado Avalanche. They were down three games to one, and Cujo put up a mash, magic show, including that famous save off of, I would say Corvée, but I'm wrong, but that magical save that he overslid the net, and then somehow he got the puck back with his stick. The others won Game 7 in Denver, but unfortunately Dallas got the revenge for what happened in 97. Edmonton had a few lean years of play. However, 2006 would bring them much joy, as they were not expected to do much as the 8th seed. They took on number 1 Detroit and shocked them in 6 games. The Oilers would go on to face the Sharks in a very good Western Conference Final and come out on top in 6 games. So the Oilers actually ended up somehow, in some way, getting to the Stanley Cup Final, despite the fact that they've had to use 3 goalies in the playoffs. Markkinen, Conklin, and Rolison. Of course, you forget the famous miski from using marketing in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Finals that saw Rob Brindamore score the winning goal. But the Oilers were loud and proud. I mean, the fans in Edmonton were very, very loud. One of the loudest fa uh, fan crowds in history. The loudest. Edmonton was down three games to one, but they didn't let their bad luck the fall of them, Pasani scoring an overtime goal, shorthanded in Game 5, and then Game 6 at home. The others would face the Hurricanes in Game 7 in Carolina, but the fairy tale ended as Carolina ended up winning that cup. All that. Edmonton had Chris Pronger, and then all of a sudden Chris Pronger left for Anaheim. That pissed off Edmonton fans. Edmonton, though, hasn't had much of a playoff experience. The only problem with Edmonton in the past 10 years is that they've had the inability to get to the playoffs and an ability to get the number one pick three times. Taylor Hall, Yale, Yakupov, Connor McDavid. I think there was one other one I'm thinking of. Ryan Eugene Hopkins, but I don't think he was a number one pick. But anyway, the others drafted pretty good, but too bad they couldn't put it on the ice. Shabby goaltending and a shabby defense will do that to you. Peter Shirelli was sent from Boston to Edmonton as to be the GM, and he shit it the bed. Especially the trade sending Taylor Hall to New Jersey for Adam Larson for a want of a good defenseman. Taylor Hall has proven the trade to be a backfiring for the Oilers, especially with a Hart Trophy a couple years ago for the Devils. The Oilers did make a spirited comeback in the playoffs in 2017, and everyone thought that the Oilers were finally getting through the promise. Unfortunately, Anaheim is squashing in the second round. So, let's talk about the 1986 Edmonton Oilers. The team that definitely is my what-if pick, for a good reason. They just came off back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They had Paul Coffey set a record for most goals in a season by a defenseman, breaking the Bobby Orr record. They had Wayne Gretzky putting up more than 200 points, as per usual. They had Curry, Messier... Glenn Anderson, Kevin Lowe, McTavish, and company basically just bind together. And heck, Grant Fuhrer had a good year in net. The Oilers easily won their first round match. I forget against who. I would say Winnipeg, but I'm wrong. So anyway, they take their thinking, and they face their provincial rivals, the Calgary Flames, in the best of seven semifinal. The winner would face St. Louis or Toronto. It's a weird thing, thinking that Toronto could have gone to the conference finals. But anyway, when I digress, the Oilers and Flames played tough for six games, both teams not giving in an inch, and both teams scoring three wins against each other. Thus, there was a game seven, and the Flames had a 2 nothing lead, but the Oilers battled back, and Messier in the second, third period, I mean, scored a quick goal to make it 2-2, and then all of a sudden, things changed. Perry Barrison shot the puck from the neutral zone down the ice, Fuhrer picked it up and gave it to Steve Smith, a 23-year-old defenseman. And then all of a sudden, Steve Smith waxed the puck off Grant Fuhrer's back pad and into the net. Calgary scored. 
Lanny McDonald was credited with the goal. However, he was not the last guy to catch the puck. That was Perry Barrison. So Barrison got that goal. And the worst part for Steve Smith? It was his 23rd birthday, and he just cost the Oilers as the Oilers couldn't score, and they lost 3-2. to two. Now, there is a fan theory. My fan theory is that Steve Smith could be distracted by a noise. If you, if you watch the highlights, when Steve Smith is ready to put the puck into his own net, you hear this kind of like a horn. My theory is that the horn might have distracted Steve Smith, and he put it through the net. But also Steve Smith, I think, was trying to pass it to the right side of the rink. And, of course, passed off Steve Smith of uh, Grant Fuhrer's pad. The others, of course, wouldn't would live to regret it because that ended up, that could have ended up giving them a five-peat, of course, with the 87-88 title. I mean, not a lot of people held it against Steve Smith. But don't tell the fans. The fans just rode Steve Smith. Hard, even though Smith led the others to three sta more Stanley Cups as the player. And was the first player that Gretzky gave the cup to in 87. Because he knew that Steve Smith felt bad and he knew he had to give. Gretzky was nice, but they basically booed Steve Smith out of Edmonton and into Chicago. I feel so bad for him. But anyway, the others missed a chance at a five feet. Something that only one team could do. That was the Habitants in the late 50s. So anyway... The what if obviously means that Edmonton would move on past Calgary. But remember, Edmonton lost to Calgary in the conference semifinals or division finals, if you will. So they still had to play somebody in the Western Con in the Campbell Conference. And that was St. Louis, who won their own game seven on April 30th. Strange how April 30th seems to always haunt teams. April 30th, 1986 was when St. Louis and the Toronto Cinderella run. My way it was seven, the Steve Smith game. And then April 30th, 1994 was when um, Detroit and Calgary both went down, even though there were one and two seeds. By the way, um, spoiler, we will talk about 1994 in the next what if. But anyway, so it's Oilers versus Blues. Oilers get home ice because of their point total. Calgary would have got the, Calgary had the home ice anyway. So let's see if the Oilers can face the Habitats. Now remember, we will mess with one conference, we don't, we don't mess with the other conference. So Montreal will be waiting for either Edmonton or St. Louis in the Stanley Cup. Uh, of course, Montreal is the Stanley Cup champion. So if Edmonton fails to take down St. Louis, then Montreal has acclaimed the Cup. Otherwise, we'll keep Edmonton in mind. Let's see what happens. So it is the Blues and it's the Oilers in the conference finals. St. Louis not really looking good with their record for the Oilers. 56, 17, and 7. Nicely done. So you see the line, the starting lines. Rick Wamsley was the number one goalie for the Blues. I can think it was Greg Mellon, but I think it was Wamsley. So anyway, first blood drawn to the Oilers, seven to four. wasn't easy. Wayne Gretzky scored a goal. Charlie Bourgeois, Bourgeois of the '86 Blues, got clipped for high sticking. He was disqualified. Kuzhnetsky on that power play made it two nothing, and then there was a huge fighting, a huge fight. McSorley got caught for instigating. Jeff Brubaker would serve the penalty. Marty McSorley and Rob Ramage were fighting. McSorley was given another 10-minute misconduct, but not an ejection. Strangely, though, it didn't help the Blues out the Oilers, as Glenn Anderson put two goals into the net to make it 4-0. Wayne Gretzky makes it 5-0, with Greg Millen having to come in the net. Kevin LaValle made it 5-1 and made it 5-2, so... Two quick goals for the Blues. But Dave Hunter made it 6-2 before Ron Flockhart made it 6-3. Brian Sutter made 6-4 at 12-39 of the third period, but they couldn't get it. And Raimel Zominen scored for the Oilers. That's a name. So the Blues, when you look at that, Terry Johnson, Bruce Bell, Lee Norwood, Jim Papisi, Eddie Beers, Dave Barr, Kent Carlson, Charlie Bourgeois. Man, they really had a cornucopia of unknowns. They had Sutter, they had Federico, they had Doug Gilmore, Rick Mahar, and Doug Wickenheiser. The Oilers, when you look down there, about names Gretzky, Anderson, Coffee, Huddy, Hoglin Jr., Smith, Lowe, Krzyzewski, McSorley, Curry, Messier, Summonen. I don't know much about Summonen. As a Tekken in, McTavish, Dave Hunter, Napier, Semenko, McClelland. Okay, kind of like an all star. 
Wamsley sucked. Greg Miller did much better. Anderson, Gretzky, Lavalley are your three stars. Bourgeois was the only one who was ejected. That was for the Blues. So the Blues decide to go with Greg Miller. Why not? Hmm. hmm. Yeah, there was a power outage that after the second period. But the Blues did well in the third period, 8-5. to five. They still lost. Gretzky, Solmanen, Mark Hunter. Mark Hunter for the Blues made a 2-1. Brian Sutter tied it at 2, but he took a dumb penalty for boarding, and Gret and Coffey scored. Dave Hunter made it 4-2. Yuri Curry made it 5-2. Millen's gone for Wamsley. Glenn Anderson and Paul Coffey scored 7-2. Ramage and Verdurko made it 7-4. Mark Hunter gets ejected for a kneeing call. However, the others can't capitalize on that power play, and Lee Norwood gets a goal for the Blues, make it 7-5, but the others get normal as Wayne Gretzky scored, 8-5. So St. Louis couldn't, I don't know, McSorley and Tikkanen both went down with injuries. Wow, that's amazing. I think Tikkanen was that mean call by Mark Hunter, but McSorley and Tikkanen Hurt. Got Gretzky, Coffee, Curry. So they head to St. Louis. St. Louis decides to go back to Wamsley. And it didn't work. 8-2. to two. Five quick goals for the others in the first period. Wamsley got replaced. Anderson, Gretzky, Gretzky, McTavish, Curry. Mark Hunter did score for the Blues. So anyway, Messier makes it 6-1. Salmon had made it 7-1. Bertie Verdurko made it 7-2 for the Blues, but Yari Curry made 8-2. And then there was a lot of fighting. Gretzky even fought. So when it was Mark Hunter. So the goaltending didn't work out for the Blues again. Gretzky, Curry, and Coffey, your three stars. And finally, game four, Greg Millen put back in the net. Is it a sweep? 8-7. What? 8-7? Wow. Glenn Anderson, Mike Kruczewski, Wayne Gretzky scoring for the Oilers in the first period. Kevin LaValle in the second period. And then for Durko, Gretzky, Gretzky. So Gretzky's hat-trick goal puts Wamsley back in the net. Ron Flockhart made it 5-3 Blues. And then McSorley took a dumb penalty for charging, so he's gone. Eddie Beers puts up a goal to make it 5-4. But the Oilers prove their worth in the third period as Gretzky scores two more goals. To make it 7-4, Joe Mullen made it 7-5. Joe and Mullen, eh? Lee Fogelin made it 8-5. Verdurko and Flockhart scored, but they missed another shot in the last 10 seconds. 8-7. Surprised how Grant first day in the whole game. Gretzky, Curry, Krishnetsky are your three stars for the Oilers. But yeah, it was an easy sweep. Gretzky scored five goals in that game. Good grief. He was just unfucking believable if I may say so myself. So the Oilers would host the Montreal Canadiens in the Stanley Cup Finals because we don't mess with the other side of the coin. A young Patrick Waugh will be ready to go for the team. Chaldeline. I'm going to put Claude Lemieux as my first-line guy. Robinson Savoda. And the Oilers roll again 6-3. Paul Coffey and Craig McTavish scored to make it 2-0 in the first period. Ryan Walter made a 2-1 for the Habs, but on a power play, thanks to Nyland's penalty, Glenn Anderson made a 3-1. Steve Smith made a 4-1. Mario Tremblay made a 4-2 for the Habs. But then Sumanen came in. What is with this rival Sumanen guy? Wayne Gretzky made a 6-2. Nyland scored a goal to make it 6-3. McTavish, Tremblay, Walter, the three stars. Who the hell you put two of the three stars? For Montreal, and they got beaten to the hilt. <clears throat> Montreal does not do any better. They only scored twice in the second game. They did win, take a one nothing lead. Naslin, but Paul Coffey broke it five seconds into the thing. Mark Napier made a two one for the hat. I mean, for the Oilers. Yari Curry made a three one. Gretzky, that made it 4-1. Huddy, 5-1. Wise replaced the net. Steve Smith gets ejected. 
for a dumb cross check. At 6 2. Soltar did much better. So Gretzky, Curry, Naslin, your three stars of the game. I still don't know if the Habs will keep riding Patrick Waugh or not. They're down 2 nothing. I think at home in Montreal, he might be well adjusted. Well, the call was made 8 5. A big first period as Naslin and Ludwig made it 2 nothing for the Habs. Anderson, Gretzky, 2 2. Mario Tremblay made it 3-2 for the Habs. Gretzky made it 3-3. Tremblay and Chelios scored. Fuhrer finally gets yanked from the net. Glenn Anderson made it 5-4, but good old Bob Gainey made it 6-4. Max Naslin with two more goals to get a hat-trick. And Glenn Anderson gets a hat-trick of himself. Now, let's talk about the 1986 Habs. Naslin, Smith, Robinson, Savota, Tom Krubers? Tom Krubers? Leafs fans won't like that name. Chalios, Lalore, Ludwig, Sheldon, Claude Lemieux, Mario Tremblay, I see still there. Ryan Walter, Bob Gainey, Mike McPhee, Key Carpino, Chris Nyman. Moog did not really do well, giving up three goals on eight shots. Naslin, Tremblay, Anderson, your three stars. So the Oilers are like, well, let's give Fear one more chance. And it worked. 5 4, your score. Bobby Smith with a big goal to make it 1 0. Bobby Smith made it 2 0, and. The Oilers were like, uh oh, here we go again. But McSorley and Gretzky tied it up at two. Dahlin scored to make it 3 2 before Mark Messier, with a minute left, tied it at three. Mark Napier made it 4 3. Marty McSorley made it 5 3. Habs did strike, but too little too late. 5 to 4. No goalie changes. That's amazing. McSorley, Smith, Anderson, your three stars of the game. All the Oilers have to do is win one more game. I think they're going to win. They do indeed. Chalk one up for the good guys. So that's five out of seven what ifs. End up on the happy side of things. 4-3. It was close though. Napier and Tekin in scored. Chris Nyland made a 2-1 and then 2-2. Natslin made a 3-2. It's like the house were coming back. Glenn Anderson tied it at three. But then Wayne Gretzky scored the winning goal. Obviously, it would be Wayne Gretzky. Anderson, Gretzky, Naslin, the three stars. Gretzky, no doubt, is the Conn Smythe winner. I mean, after all, he was scoring goals at will. That five-goal game against the Blues. So, happiness for all the players involved. Wayne Gretzky, Glenn Anderson, Paul Coffey, Lee Bull, Glenn, Steve Smith, Kevin Lowe, Martin McSorley, Charlie Huddy, Mike Kruzanowski, Gary Curry, Mark Messier, Esther Tickening, Dave Hunter, Craig McTavish, Mark Napier, Rangel Sumner, Dave Zemenko, Kevin McClelland. They all are heroes. And they all got a Stanley Cup. Some of them probably for the only time in their career. And a lot of them for hopefully five times in their career. The five-peat would have been on, and it would have been a dynasty for the ages.